Good morning, fourth grade online learners. Welcome to Mr. Monzo's room, December 14th, 2020. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, today in fifth grade, we had to watch a video for St. Vincent's program. I believe you guys will be doing that tomorrow. Okay, so uh, you have that to look forward to. A lot of good information there. In our class today, we are going to learn about conserving resources, saving things. And you don't have to take any books out, just kind of relax. I'm going to read a little bit from my book today for the video. I do want to say this, though. If you guys use your study guide, you'll do good on the quiz. There are people that are not using their study guide. Or they're getting to the quiz and they're just putting any answer down because Oh yeah, we learned about that, so that must be the answer. Sometimes that answer will be better in a different question. Sometimes that answer comes from three lessons ago. Okay? There's only going to be one good answer in that multiple choice. And if you read the question and put, I would try each answer in there until you find one that makes sense. Okay? Because only one is going to make sense with that question. That answer can make perfect sense with another question, but not that particular question, okay? So if I ask you a question, today we're learning about conserving resources, and I start talking about Pluto or Jupiter or Mars, those are good answers if we're learning about Earth and space science. They're not good answers for conserving resources, okay? So take your time, and if you get below a 7 out of 10, I automatically throw it away. Now, I'll put it in my grade book. I'll put it in there in red, whatever your score is. And then I wait to see, are you going to retake it? And if you retake it, I cross out that red answer. I put it in black. That's your new score. But I can't keep chasing you guys around, okay? I think we talk about this often. And some people are like, nope, nope, I'm good with that score. If you get below a 7 out of 10, you should not be good with that score. You should read your study guide and try it at least one more time. Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense. Okay, check your score right if you're done with the quiz. Redo it if you have to. All right, let me just do a check on the video, make sure we're working. And it is still rolling, but sometimes the screen goes black, so I have to check and see is it still video recording, and it is. Okay, so today's lesson begins on page C60, and if you do not have your book at home, all of this stuff can be found in your study guide, and you don't need your book at home because we have websites, we have study guides. What we don't have is a lot of textbooks to be taken home because some of them don't get back to school. So we tend to not let the textbooks go home. If you do have one, please make sure you bring it back by the end of the year. Conserving resources. Let me just read this, these two pages that I'm going to talk about, something you should find very interesting. There are things people can do to protect Earth's natural resources and the environment. Tons of garbage. What, you have, what have you thrown away today? You may have put paper towels, an empty plastic bottle, and an empty chips bag in the trash. Many people threw away these and other items today. Many of the items that are thrown away make life easier. But some of the materials used to make them are pollutants. A pollutant is a material that causes pollution. Millions of tons of garbage are thrown away each year. Much of it ends up in places called landfills. Pollutants in landfills can find their way into the ground and, and into lakes and rivers. A lot of garbage is thrown into landfills. This landfill is so big it can be seen from outer space. Guys, imagine being on a spaceship in outer space and you're looking at the earth and this landfill is so big you can see it from outer space. What? Let me finish the lesson, then we can all take some comments and questions. One more page. Good and bad practices. In the United States, there are laws that require companies and communities to control pollution. There are also laws that support the practice of conservation. Conservation is the preserving and wise use of natural resources. Some laws require companies to clean up any pollution they cause. Other laws identify chemicals that may be safely released into the environment and those that may not. 
An environment is everything that surrounds and affects a living thing. There are even laws that allow farmers to use only certain chemicals to protect crops from weeds and harmful insects. So farmers might want to fertilize their field, grow a lot of great crops, but guess what? If it's harming the environment, the wildlife in the area, they can't use it, or they have to use less of it. All these laws help protect natural resources, but more protection is needed. Soil is one of the Earth's most important resources, but a farming practice called slash and burn farming is destroying soil in rainforests and causing erosion. In this practice, farmers cut down and burn millions of acres of forest. Farmers then plant crops on the cleared land. Because the soil is poor in nutrients, the land can be farmed for only a few years. Then more rainforest must be cut down and burned to clear for more farmland. Forests and soil are destroyed. All right, give me your attention up front, guys. Let me just do a video check again and see if we're still rolling. We are still rolling. Now, you guys, most of you guys know that I really like cars. Yeah. And you might say to yourself, what's that have to do with garbage? A lot. A lot. I'm not asking a question I want to have answers from, so keep your hands down. Um, a few years ago, I got to go to a car show of all places, clear across the country, in Washington State. And I went there, and this man collected these cars, 3,000 cars. That's a lot of money, guys, and some of them were very expensive cars. Lots of money. And you can't believe it. He has so many cars that he made a museum, and it's in Spokane, Washington, and he just gave the museum to the city. It's called America's Car Museum. And this guy's last name is LeMay, L-E-M-A-Y. And he has the LeMay Auto Museum. He actually has two or three of them. And there's collections of cars you can't even see because they're not open to the public. But I went there, and I was there for other events too, but I had a chance to go there, and I probably saw a 1,000 cars. It took me all day. So there was 2,000 I didn't see. Can anybody tell me, thinking about this lesson, what's this have to do with this lesson? The Allison. Cars made out of tin cans. The cars were not made out of tin cans. Good guess. Mm -hmm. um, tin cans. Cars can cause pollution, but why would this guy buy 3,000 cars? Who thinks he had a lot of money? Raise your hand. He had a lot of money. Guess what, guess what he used to do for a living? He was a garbage man. Oh my gosh. And then one day when he was very young, he was very smart, he saved his money, he bought a garbage truck. And then he bought a bunch of land, and he made it a landfill. And then he bought a bunch of more garbage trucks. And before you knew it, he did such a good job coming around collecting the garbage that he had a couple cities that used him for garbage collection. And he became a millionaire, and his hobby was cars. So I was so impressed by this man that was so smart. He did a job that maybe some people wouldn't want to do, but he became very wealthy and he was very smart with his money and he collected cars. Now, um, I guess the point I'm trying to make here, guys, is somebody's got to do this job and he was glad to do it and we thank him for doing it. And then he got into recycling too. So he was good at getting rid of what we can't use. He was good at recycling and he was good at collecting cars. So I was very impressed by that to think that this man could become so wealthy. There's a lot of money sometimes in doing things that other people may not want to do if you're smart about it. Daniel, do you have a question? How old was he when he became a millionaire? How old was he when he became a millionaire? I'm not sure, um, but um, I know he did pass away, but his wife, the last time I checked, was still alive. And they have events every year. They try to sell these cars because there's so many of them. But he still has thousands. Was he older than was he older than 17 when he became a millionaire? Yes. Now, one, one thing I found particularly interesting, he took one garbage truck, it was brand new, and it didn't have any insides to it yet. It just had like a big empty area where you put the trash, and a lot of the mechanical stuff wasn't there. And he was at a car show, he liked this car, he actually put the car in the back of the garbage truck and drove it back to Washington. 
So people thought it was just a garbage truck going down the road. Meanwhile, it was hauling a classic car. So he was very smart, very innovative, and very much loved cars. And he made a great living from um, what we're learning about, which is conserving resources, getting rid of what we can't use, and recycling what we can. Tomorrow, if we have a chance, I want to go on this website, LeMay Auto Museum, and just give you an idea of what this guy was able to accomplish in his lifetime. Yes? So he did pass away, and last time I checked, his, his wife was still alive, and every year they have a big auction to try to sell some of his cars, but I don't know how you get rid of 3,000 cars. And he gave a couple hundred to the city of Spokane, Washington, and built a museum. So you can accomplish a lot, guys, in life if you focus, you're smart, and maybe you take a job that some other people may not want to do, but look what he did here. He, he really did a great thing for the environment and for his family. Riley, did you have a question? Okay, we are going to learn more about conserving resources. If you're at home and you have the book, read it. If not, look over your study guide, and you may want to start on your journal entries. There's three this week. Okay, fourth grade online learners, I hope you guys enjoyed that lesson, and uh, we will see you tomorrow.